Hello everyone, we are starting Unit 3, Energy and Society. This unit is organized in three chapters. Chapter 5, Work, Energy and Power. Chapter 6, Thermal Energy. And Chapter 7, Nuclear Energy. Here are overall expectation. Basically, it's about the energy transformation and uh, technologies that applies those principles law conservation of energy and to be able to solve related problems concepts of work kinetic energy gravitational potential energy nuclear energy and thermal energy and the energy transformation from one to another efficiency of this transformation and the power big ideas is that energy can be transformed from one to another and is never 100 percent efficient always involves thermal energy losses thus such a friction so although a technological application of those concepts will have a positive impact in the society and environment they are associated with the negative effects as well so we have to be careful when we apply those technologies chapter five work energy power and society is based on mechanic energy and work after completing this chapter, you should be able to have a better understanding of work, energy, power, and law conservation of energy. Solve problems related to work, energy, power, and law conservation of energy. And distinguish between kinetic energy and potential energy, especially gravitational potential energy, because that is part of mechanic energy. So this chapter is focused on mechanic energy energy we're going to start with a uh, section 5.1 which is work it's a relation between force and displacement there's a close relation between work and energy so definition of the work is a change of energy and energy's ability to do work and mechanical work is done on object when a force displaces that object so if there's no displacement, the work is zero. So it's about force and displacement. This work depends on a direction of the force or a component of the force along the line of the displacement. So the maximum work is done when a force is parallel to displacement. Formula is work is equal force times displacement. So standard unit of work is joule that's named after James Joule, the English physicist, for, its, for his uh, contribution on uh, energy field of the physics. And the Joule is Newtons times meter, because it's a force of uh, unit of force is Newton, and unit of displacement is meter. You have more than those two units for uh, work, can be uh, since the Newton is kilogram meter per second square. That means it's kilogram times meter square over second square. So uh, those are different way of uh, expressing the unit of joule. Work is a scalar quantity. So that means it has magnitude only, not direction. However, work can have positive negative and zero value now we're going to focus on positive and negative for now if the force is at an angle to displacement the only component of the force that is at the same line with the displacement does any work the component that is perpendicular to that displacement does zero work so take a look on that diagram there's a force and component of the force that is along that displacement now they have the same direction that means that the work is positive so it's a product of force times cosine theta times delta d so that is the formula force cosine theta times delta d however you don't need to calculate that component by itself you just use the formula force 
times displacement times cosine theta that is between displacement and force that's force that is displacement that is angle theta so that can do all the work for you now if the direction of the force or the direction of the component along the displacement line are in an opposite direction then the work is negative so if you see on the diagram before displacement which is direction of the motion here and the force are at the same direction okay on a diagram on a bottom if you see the force of kinetic friction on a pack that is moving on an ice it is in the opposite opposite direction of the pack hockey pack that is moving on other direction so you know that that angle here is 180 degree so that's why is negative because cosine 180 is negative 1 that makes the work negative because if you multiply magnitude of kinetic force times magnitude of displacement then multiply by negative 1 that will give you a negative value for work now for some time can be perpendicular to displacement of the object for example static force of friction that is applied on the tires of the car that undergoes circular motion we're going to learn more about this later it is a perpendicular to displacement to the velocity of the car so that means that work done by force of static friction on a car is equal to zero so because cosine of 90 degree is zero and you multiply zero with any number that will give you zero general rule is a force that is everywhere perpendicular to the motion does zero work for example the force of gravity that keeps that moon or any satellite in orbit does zero work on a satellite or on a moon which is a natural satellite because that direction of the motion is a perpendicular to a force of gravity so based on that formula here cosine 90 degree is zero and any force and any displacement multiplied by zero will give you zero so another common thing that you might understand is that let's say that you have a backpack and you're carrying that all day that's heavy you're doing a lot of work but in a physics term you do zero work why because your displacement that is moving forward and the force that you're carrying it that against the gravity it is in a perpendicular it is in a 90 degree so using the same formula f a applied force or normal force times displacement is zero and the force of gravity which is again perpendicular to displacement does zero work on your backpack so that is something that uh, it's hard to to comprehend but it's true what you need to understand when you need to remember is direction of the displacement and direction of the force an angle between them make sure that those direction are that angle is measured between two vectors when the origins are at the same point or you can imagine that origins are at the same point here's a summary of the work and its values work is a scalar quantity and can have positive negative and zero and that value depend on angle between force and displacement in order to determine correctly the angle between two vectors we have to make sure that both vectors are at the same origin so we can transfer one vector at the origin of the other take a look on the diagram if those 
two vectors are transfer transferred at the same origin and angle between those is less than 90 then work value is going to be positive why because a cosine theta is the one that determines the sign of the work we are using magnitude of force times magnitude of displacement so both of them are positive and if the cosine theta is positive zero or negative that is going to determine what is going to be value of work positive negative or zero so in a second case when the cosine theta is 90 so the force and displacement are perpendicular to each other because of the cosine 90 is zero that makes work of those two perpendicular forces equals zero now if the angle between those two forces two vectors is wider than 90 then if you can do that in your calculator if you want try to pick any number that is between 90 and 180 then you see that value of cosine of that angle is going to be negative with 180 which is going to be negative one so the the maximum value of the work as a negative is going to be when the angle between displacement and force is 180 and a maximum positive of the force and displacement is going to be when a force and displacement form a zero degree angle that means they are exactly at the same direction they are parallel to each other they are at the same direction now what if the displacement and forces per se they are not drawn at the same origin then you can do it so you can trans transfer that displacement where the origin is and that will make clear that angle between forces is here is a 20 between between force and displacement is 20 between tension 2 and displacement is 30 but most important you're going to see that displacement and force of kinetic friction form not a zero degree but 180 degree is very important because direction are the opposite so the angle is 180 degree and if you try the cosine of 180 degree is negative one so that makes the work done by kinetic force of friction is negative now how to calculate the network if more than one force act on an object then you can actually calculate work done by individual forces so work done by force one on that uh, along the line of the displacement and plus work done by force two plus work done by force three and so on and so forth remember that consider the displacement to be like an x-axis since that is a horizontal in this case then you can find a component of those forces on x axis and you can multiply by displacement so f1x times delta d plus f2x times delta d plus f3x times delta d but remember if we have all displacement the same we can factor it then what is left there is sum of x component of all those forces that are in diagram but sum of all component makes f net x so now total work or network is equal f net x times delta d or the component of the net force that is along the line of the displacement so you see the displacement is direction of the displacement is very important to determine the not only the value of work 
but a sign of that work. Again, let's uh, summarize it. Uh, if the force and displacement are in the same direction, then the work is positive. When they are in opposite direction, the work is negative. In this diagram, you see a weight goes up the same direction of applied force, and the displacement is the same. So the work is positive. And when the weight goes down, so that's the displacement down, and the force is still up because that's your your applied force, that's you're holding that weight. It is up, they are in opposite direction. That means that work done by applied force is negative in this case. More examples. If you have a box and you want to lift that up at the height h, which is a displacement in this case, so since that you are lifting it up against gravity with a constant velocity, that means that that applied force that you are applying on a box or a normal force, or a, it is going to be up and displacement is going to be up, that means it is positive. But if you, at the same time, if you want to uh, calculate work done by force of gravity, which is down, and you are lifting this up, that is going to be negative. So you are lifting it up, making positive work, and the gravity, which is down always, does a negative work. Now, if you are lowering down the box from a certain height, h, to down, then you are holding it and you still are holding against gravity. That means that still applied force is m times g and displacement is h. So the force that you are applying is m times g, but this time the work that you are doing is negative because you are lowering down, but you are holding it up is negative. But the force of gravity in this case, since the force of gravity is down and you are lowering down so that uh, displacement is going to be on that direction down, that means the force of gravity in that second case will make a positive, will do a positive work. So that depends on the direction. So the direction of the force and displacement determine the work sign. For example, if the apple goes down, now the force of gravity does a positive work, but if you uh, toss that apple upward, the force of gravity still applies on that apple and still is downward, but the motion of the apple is up and the force of gravity is down. So this, you can say, work done by force of gravity is negative. In this case, force of gravity and displacement are in the same direction, so work done by force of gravity is positive. So the same force, depends on the direction of the object, will make positive or negative. Let's do an example. A roping crane upward at a 45 degree pulls a suitcase. A tension on a rope is 20 newton. How much work does the tension do if the suitcase is pulled 100 meter? So what is uh, what do we have? Tension is 20. Angle is 45 degree, displacement is 100, and what is required is a work. Formula is force displacement cosine theta. So force now is tension, which is 20 Newton, and displacement is 100 meter, cosine 45 will give you 1,414 Joule. Or we can do the same thing by calculating uh, X component of that tension which actually do X component of the tension that does do a work that is along the displacement, which is 14.14. 14. 14. 20 times cosine 45 is 14.14. 14. And if you multiply by 100, will give you 
414 joule. So pretty much is the same. It's the work done by a force at the certain angle is the same as done the work done by its component along that displacement. We have said it many, many times. Here is a proof. Here's another example. A 3,000 kilogram truck is loaded into a ship by a crane that exert an upward force of 31 kilonewton on a truck. This force is, which is large enough to overcome the gravitational force and keep the truck moving upward, is applied over a distance of 2 meter. So what is given? Mass is 3,000 kilogram, force is 31 kilonewton, and displacement is 2 meter. Work is required. So find the work done by a crane. So force of the crane is the same direction as displacement. So that means the cosine between those is zero. That means the cosine zero is one. That makes it positive. So it's a 31 kilonewton times two meter is 62 kilojoule. Next one is to find the work done by gravity. Force of gravity is in opposite direction of the motion, delta dy, so they form a 180 degree angle in opposite direction. So that means that cosine of 180 is negative one, and that will make negative 58.8 kilojoule. So force of gravity is ma mass time gravitational acceleration. And the next one is find the net work. So some of those two works, you just add it up, but make sure positive and negative sign matters. So it's a 62 kilojoule minus plus minus 58.8 kilojoule. That'll make 3.2 kilojoule of energy. We can represent the work done by a force by plotting graphically magnitude of force on a y-axis and magnitude of displacement on an x-axis. This is known as a force position or FD graph. Work done is equal to a force time displacement or an area of the rectangle. If the force is constant is in a different segments, then we can split the graph on a known geographic figures or uh, rectangles and the work done by that force that is changing in a different segment is equal to area under the line of each segment. And you can add those together. Sometimes you can have a force that is a positive and force that is pr producing a negative work. If you want to add all work done to get a network, you just have to add positive area and negative area of those uh, rectangles and uh, in this case for example network has to be negative because uh, negative work is bigger than positive work in this example so the equation that we learn work is equal force time displacement time cosine theta can only be used to calculate the mechanic work work done by an object when the force of an object is constant. If the force is changing, the work can be calculated using the graph. So area under the graph is work done. If that's as simple as a triangle, then you can use area under the graph, which is the average force times displacement. But if the graph is more complex and the line of the graph is a curve, then you can split that area under that line to a different rectangles as accurate as you can. And you add all those pieces together to give you the total work done by a force, changing force. And the smaller the rec uh, those rectangles and smaller the segment of displacement that you uh, do, the more accurate the work calculated is. Here's an example. A force varies with x as shown in a diagram on the right. 
Find the work done by force on a particle as the particle moves from position 0 to 6. So area under that line, it can be split in two areas. Area 1 is a rectangle and area 2 is a triangle. You can uh, calculate the area under the line. So 5 times 4 plus half of the 5 times 2 and gives you the total area, which is the total work, is equal to 25 joule. Now, if you have a, a bit complex like this graph, then you can split this graph in uh, four different areas. And you have area A, which is triangle, area B, rectangle, area C, triangle, and area D, triangle. So then that means that work done is equal to a total sum of all areas, area A, B, C, and D. And I want you to try to calculate that area, pause the video, calculate the area, and then we'll continue. Total work should be equal to a 26.5 joule. If you got that answer, you are correct. And that actually concludes this uh, lesson for 5.1 work. Until next time, have a good one.